What is up guys? Welcome back to another scripting tutorial. Today we are doing part three to our Roblox beginner series, um, scripting series, sorry. Um, and today we're going to be learning about functions. Functions are vital if you want to make a good Roblox game. So that's what we're going to be doing in this episode. So, um, but first, please, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. I was scrolling through the analytics and I realized 93% of you guys aren't subscribed. I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button because it really means a lot to me. Um, I, uh, yeah, it just it means a lot to me, and you, uh, you'll be missing out on a lot of future videos that are just fun and here for you guys. So it'd mean a lot to me if, uh, yeah, if you get uh, if you did subscribe. So first off, let's hit a, uh, insert another script into service script service, and this time I'm going to call it um, functions script. So what is a function? Well, a function is a block of code, right? You can think of it as a block. Um, and it's a block of code that we write out so that we can repeat it, and it makes our code easier uh, to reuse and write, and um, and they're just important to making your game. So how do you write a function? That's a good question. Um, and to start off, you just write out a function, okay? So that tells the script, all right, we're starting a function. Next, um, you're going to name your function. Like a variable, you can give it whatever name you want, but it can't be spaced out, so it can't be, um, like, uh, french fries, like that. It can't be like that. Uh, but if you wanted it to be called, let's just, let's just do a f simple one for now. I'm going to call this function hello world, and after you finish naming it, you have to give it two parentheses and drop a line outside of them. And as you can see, we have our function all set up. And in here, we can write out some code, like print hello world, right? And now if we press play, you'll notice, most likely, we don't have our hello world. We have this old hello world with a comma, but we don't have our hello world that we just wrote out. It's not there, right? So let's why you may be wondering why is it not running so i could give it a new thing to print like uh the function has run but it still won't print that's because the function hasn't been called to call a function we just type out hello world and then two uh, apostrophe what are these things called parentheses there we go and that's calling the function so now if we play the game it'll say in the uh, in the output sorry not console uh, where is it? Sorry, I'm lagging a little bit. Um, the function has run. Perfect. So, that works perfectly. Now we're going to talk about parameters. So, I'm going to go ahead and drop a few lines, and I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to call this one function add numbers, okay? So, we have this new function, and we're going to, inside of the parentheses, we're going to write num1, comma, num2. Now we can say print num1 plus num2 like that so this these are parameters right here okay num1 and num2 those are called parameters but currently if we just called add numbers right if we just fired that function right away and didn't do anything else we just typed it in we would get an error okay so let's um let's see it says um attempt to perform arithmetic add on nil so this is saying that it does n the script doesn't know what t what num1 and num2 is they don't the script doesn't know anymore or at all it doesn't know what to add together and print so uh we're going to go ahead and give it some numbers how do you do that well it's really simple all you do is we find num1 so num1 is in the first position let's put num1 to 2 and then we'll put comma, and now we're on to num3. Let's put num1 is 33, like that, okay? So 2 plus 33 is 35, right? How do we know which one is num1 and num2? It's because num1 came first, 2 came first, num2 came second, and then 33 is second. So num1 is 2, and num2 uh, uh, num is 33, okay? Hope that made sense. Um, so now when we click add numbers, or when we fire add numbers, it knows what the numbers are that we're going to add. So if we go play the game now, we should get printed hello world. Wow, that table creak is horrible. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so if we scroll up, we have 35. 
because it added our two parameters. These are parameters. It added the two parameters, num1 and num2, together. I know that this is a confusing concept, um, but it gets easier as you do it, okay? There are also things uh, called... Um, event that can trigger functions so i'm going to briefly touch on this because it's really really important however it may be confusing so do not worry at all if this is confusing to you but i'm going to briefly touch on this so i'm going to say game dot players so whenever we want to reference anything in our game anything in any of these we have to say game because the script then knows that we are talking about our game. So in this case, I am saying dot players because now the script knows I'm talking about the game and then the players, okay? But if I wanted to uh, talk about the base plate, I would say game in the script dot workspace because we want to go inside of the workspace. And to go find something inside, you have to say dot and then type out what is inside that you're looking for. And in this case, it's the base plate, okay? So that's not what I'm doing right now, but I just wanted to um, make sure you understand that. If you don't, that's okay. Like I said, um, I'm just gonna touch on this because um, it is important, but we'll, we'll learn more about it later on. So I'm gonna say game.players. Uh, cause we're, sorry, I'm going a little fast because we're going from our game and now we're going into the players and we're just going to now fire this event or when this event is fired, sorry, we're going to say dot player added. So this is going to happen whenever a player joins the game. This is one of the most, uh, one of the, one of the events that I use most often in my games that you are going to need to know. We're going to say, so how it, the way that you fire functions from events is after you say this, like game.players.player added, then you say colon connect, open bracket, closed bracket, function, open bracket. And if uh, like that, if that happens to you where it gets a closed bracket as well, just delete that other closed bracket. Then come out of this and drop a line. And whatever is inside of here now, is going to happen whenever a player joins the game, okay? So maybe we wanna fire a function. I hope this makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Like I said, we're gonna do more of this later on. But we can uh, create a new function called function player joined the game. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. And I'm gonna drop a line and I'm gonna say, just print uh, a player has joined the game, okay? And now we can just call player joined the game inside of this so whenever a player joins our game whenever a player joins the actual game itself okay not just when the game starts but because i joined as a player right i am now a player because we have players right we said game dot players right here and then dot player added me i was added to the players okay and we if we look in our output we see a player has joined the game, okay? So if you want a list of all the, param uh, sorry, the e events that you get, you can go into view, and then you can hit, I believe it's find results. Nope, sorry, it's not find results. It's um, object browser right here, okay? And here we have a ton of different things that we can look through. You're probably like, what even is this? <laughs> and don't worry about it if you are. I totally get it if you are um, confused right now, but uh, basically what you can do is you can go through each of these individual things. These are all the things you can have in your game if they have this little icon next to it. For example, uh, we put a part in in the first episode. We can click part, and if we scroll down, everything with this little icon right here, this little lightning bolt, those are events that can be fired. So look, we can say child added. So whenever something is added inside of the part, we can say touched, like when, when something touches that part or when they stop touching it, okay? So there are so many things you can do. You can look at the players and you can see there's, uh, there's player added like we just did and player removing as well. You can look at all these different things. There's scripts um, like this. There are so many different um, uh, events that you can use. So 
just play around with functions make new functions you can explore those events if you would like to further um that pretty much concludes this episode um but make sure to please hit that subscribe button like i mentioned earlier many of you guys are not subscribed it really helped me out if you um hit the subscribe button and uh it helps you out because and hit that notification bell because you'll be notified when the next part comes out um but other than that just play around with functions keep making more explore the parameters if you want Keep on scripting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.